Hello, my name is Ricky Pound, and in this short video, I'd like to talk about one specific frontispiece, which contains a plethora of Masonic symbolism, some of which is more obvious to Freemasons than others. This is the Builder's Jewel, and this would go on eventually to have many reprints, and today is recognised as one of the earliest sources for Masonic symbolism, and in particular, early symbolism related to the third degree, also known as the Master Mason or the Hiramic degree. Now, it has never been established when or where Batty Langley was initiated into the craft, sometimes known as Freemasonry, but it is known that the garden designer, pattern book illustrator and Gothic architect possessed an intimate knowledge of Masonic law and its symbolism. For example, Langley published regularly in the Grub Street Journal under a pseudonym of Hiram the legendary architect of Solomon's Temple and a central figure in Masonic ritual. And in fact, Langley christened one of his children, Hiram. Langley's commitment to Freemasonry, its values and beliefs, were to find visual expression most fully on the frontispiece of the Builder's Jewel of 1741, a piece of art which contained much of the known symbolism associated with the first three degrees of Freemasonry at the time. Other titles of Langley's books influenced by Freemasonry included Practical Geometry, which he dedica dedicated to Lord Paisley, Grand Master of Freemasonry. In 1726, together with Ancient Masonry, who he dedicated to a host of known Freemasons, including Francis, Duke of Lorraine, the first recognised foreign royal Freemason. The Builder's uh, Jewel, to call it by its very short name, was published by R. Ware in London on the 26th of May 1741, with the initial run, print run of just 2,000 copies. The frontispiece was designed by Batty Langley and engraved by his brother, Thomas Langley. And you can see Batty Langley on the right here with a garden plan. The frontispiece is signed Batty Langley Invent AL, uh, 5741. Now this date refers to the Masonic calendar, which dates the creation of the earth rather arbitrarily, I think, to 4000 BC. Freemasons often dated significant events by adding 4000 years onto that date. Thus, the date of the frontispiece here is 5741. The letters A and L are short for the Latin words Anno Lucius, meaning in the year of light, referring to the date of creation. Now, virtually all the Masonic symbolism present on the frontispiece of the Builder's Jewel can be found within the so-called Wilkinson Manuscript, believed to have been written around 1727, named after a family in whose possession the document was found. The Wilkinson Manuscript takes the form of a catechism of 72 questions and answers, which reveal a wealth of material related to early Masonic ritual and symbolism. The manuscript also includes one of the earliest references to the letter G within Freemasonry and other references to Hiram Abiff, the murdered architect of Solomon's Temple. How Langley acquired access to the Wilkinson manuscript remains unknown, but, but that he was intimately associated with the symbolism within the document cannot be in doubt, as virtually all of it appears illustrated on the frontispiece and contained within the frontispiece that we are looking at today. In reality, the Masonic symbolism of the frontispiece of, frontispiece of the Builder's Jewel was the content of the Wilkinson manuscript in complete visual form. Now, the three pillars illustrated on the frontispiece of the Builder's Jewel are in order from left to right, uh, the Doric, Tuscan and Corinthian. On the dado of the pedestal of each pillar are inscribed the Roman numerals 7, 5 and 3. These are three of the most significant and important numbers in Freemasonry and together equal 15. In some depictions of the spiral staircase that connected the floor of the inner chamber to Solomon's temple, the staircase is shown as comprised of 15 steps. Sometimes these steps are shown divided into groups of three, five and seven or illustrated individually, as we will see later.
The concept is also illustrated on the frontispiece of the builder's jewel in the form of a hill situated in the background with the number 15 placed on the summit, which we will also see a little later. The Doric column has the letter W inscribed on the plinth of the pedestal, donating it as exemplifying the virtue of wisdom. The Tuscan order with the letter S signifying strength and the Corinthian column or pillar the letter B, illustrating the virtue of beauty. In later Masonic depictions of the pillars, particularly with the influence of neoclassicism, the arrangements of the pillars change from the Roman architectural hierarchy and reverts back to the original use through the Greek orders, with strength associated with the Doric, wisdom now associated with the Ionic, and beauty with the Corinthian. Between the Doric and Custom, uh, uh, Tuscan pillars is placed the letter H, and between the Tuscan and Corinthian, the letter G. These letters refer to holy ground, as all Masonic lodges are believed to be representations of the Temple of Jerusalem, and were symbolically, at least in theory, positioned on cons consecrated ground. Now, located towards the center of each pillars are symbols further associated with architecture and Freemasonry. On the Doric pillar are depictions of the furniture of the lodge, the set square, compasses and book of sacred law, which in Langley's own Christian belief would have been the Bible. Above these symbols is a panel containing representations of platonic solids, including a point, a line, uh, superficies and a solid or a cube. On the Tuscan pillar is pinned a representation of the Masonic Lodge itself with its characteristic checkered floor, a reference uh, to duality, which is a common feature of Masonic Lodges. It basically means the coming together of opposites of male, female, light and dark, etc. Uh, yin yang. The temple is orientated to the north, where the main entrance is flanked by two pillars labelled J and B. These are representations of the biblical pillars Jacquin and Bowes, which stood on the porch at the entrance of the Temple of Jerusalem. Three other secondary uh, entrances are depicted, as you can see uh, on the plan there, together with a seven pointed blazing star containing a very early use, it has to be said, of the letter G, possibly indicating a kind of Christianized Kabbalistic influence. The letter G refers to geometry in Freemasonry, the fifth of the seven liberal arts, uh, of which geometry is considered the most important. Located immediately above the temple plan is a clock face with both hands pointing vertically to the numerals X11, indicating high 12 at noon. This alludes to the newly formed Hiramic legend where Hiramabif, the architect of Solomon's temple, was murdered at the western entrance of the temple at midday after a failed attempt by three fellow craft masons to retrieve the mason's word from the master architect which would command them greater pay. On the frieze of the column is a humanized face with wind blowing both east and west, which we will see in the next slide. This is an allusion to the winds of knowledge dispersing Masonic truths. In Freemasonry, the east represents the rising sun, enlightenment and birth, and the west with the setting sun and death. Most Masonic lodges uh, are traditionally, supposedly at least, orientated to face the east, the direction of the Holy Land and the revered but destroyed Temple of Jerusalem. Now, adorning the trunk of the Corinthian pillars are movable jewels, the level, square and plum. Immediately above is another panel containing various line drawings representing the perpendicular together with the square and rectangle or the oblong square. Now, on the abacus of the Doric column, is positioned a sun, which you can see to the left, the Tuscan pillar a moon, and the Corinthian pillar a bust in Grecian attire. Taken together, 
the Sun, the Moon and Master Mason, which are indicated here by the initials MM, which you can see uh, located uh, beneath, uh, were known from the Wilkinson manuscript of 1727 as the three great lights of Freemasonry. It is likely that the identity of the bust is the Greek polymath Pythagoras, often associated with Euclid, who could legitimately be associated with the Corinthian pillar through his theories on mathematical beauty. And actually Langley also baptised one of his children, Euclid. In addition, the Golden Section and Euclid's 47 Proposition were important mathematical and practical formulas for Freemasons, as illustrated by the presence of the symbol of the 47 Proposition on the frontispiece engraved by John Pine to Anderson's Constitution of the Freemasons of 1723. It is often believed by many Renaissance architects that numbers possessed a special mystical characteristic and number magic could be detected in proportions and harmonics of many Renaissance and ancient buildings. Now, the final and possibly most important pieces of symbolism on this frontispiece of the Builder's Jewel is also one of the most neglected and overlooked. On the brow of the hill in the background is discreetly placed the number 15 with a sprig of spiky foliage. This is a subtle but direct and deliberate reference to the newly created Hiramic legend, which was first disclosed to the public in a disclosure by Samuel Pritchard's uh, Masonry Dissected in 1730. In this catechism, it was described how the master architect Hiram Abiff was killed in the temple at midday. And that, of course, goes with the clock that we saw earlier with the, uh, the hands pointing at 12 by three fellow craft masons who sought to obtain from him the mason or master's word. Now, after the absence of 15 days, King Solomon ordered 15 groups of masons in, in three, so three times five, to look for the body of the missing architect. After 15 days, his body was discovered on the brow of a hill, then called the Mossy House. And Solomon's masons marked the grave with an acacia plant until a decision was made on how to raise the badly decomposed body and where it should be buried. At his funeral, 15 masons were in attendance, all dressed in white aprons and gloves, before Hiram's body was interned in the Sanctum Sanctorum within the temple. In Langley's frontispiece, the number 15 is visual on the brow of the hill, accompanied by what can be interpreted as acacia or acacia plant. This is a direct and very early reference to the Hiramic legend, which was to form the basis for the ritual of the most important of the Masonic degrees, the third degrees, the Master Mason degree. Now, I just want to point out a few illustrations here. The one on the left is a French uh, frontispiece from a Masonic document from about 1780. In it, you can see the three ruffians that killed the master architect. You've got a setting mall, for instance, at the bottom that finished him off. You've got these tiers known as glutes. There's 15 of them. Again, the number 15 comes into it. And then on the right, we have got an acacia leaf. And again, on the right, just to remind you, we've got the acacia leaf on the top of the hill with the number 15. And we've got the clock set at 12 o'clock. And this is the last slide I'm going to show you. And again, it's a Masonic frontispiece. Uh, if you look in the centre, you can see a coffin. Now, this is a direct reference to Hiram Abiff. You can see the skull, you can see crossbones, and you can see H on the coffin itself for Hiram and the Hiramic legend. And then if you look down below, you can see a small mound with acacia leaf as well. And then on the left, you've got the chequered floor symbols of duality, the two columns labelled J and B for Jack in and bows. And if you look at the top, you've got a sun and moon with humanised faces, uh, etc. I hope you've enjoyed this and I now understand a little bit more about the Hiramic legend and its symbolism. Thank you.